Good day, everyone. Welcome back to English for Academic and Professional Purposes. For our ninth lesson and final lesson for this semester, we will be discussing and talking about how to write a survey, scientific, and field reports. For today's lesson, of course, we have to define what a survey report is, a scientific report, and field report. We'll also be covering its general structure and as well as the guidelines in writing these kinds of reports. Technical reports are usually defined as academic papers that present and analyze the results or findings of a specific or a particular research. Now, there are three different kinds of technical reports that we can use. The first one is a survey report. Second is a scientific report. And the third one is a field report. Let us now differentiate what makes these three different kinds of technical reports different from one another. Let's go to a survey report. A survey report is simply a type of academic paper wherein you simply collect data using a survey questionnaire and then you present the findings from this survey questionnaire based on the research that you have conducted. So you collect the information using a survey questionnaire. You ask your respondents, you ask your study participants to fill this up or answer this survey questionnaire. And from that, from their answers, you summarize their answers and present your findings. More often than not, before, of course, you could even write a survey report, you need to formulate a survey questionnaire. Now, how do we write survey questions? There are several, here are some several tips on how you can write survey questions. First one, whenever you write survey questions, write your questions in a simple and direct to the point manner. Do not make your sentences too complicated, too long, because you have to expect that your readers or your study participants, your um, intended respondents, would not have a lot of time to go through everything in your survey questionnaire. Second, whenever you are presenting ranking options, try to limit the number. Um, probably one to five, one to five is enough. Don't go over five because it might be too much for your respondents or your intended study participants to process. Third, whenever you ask a multiple choice question that can only have one answer, give the respondents a list that covers all the options without overlapping. Meaning, make sure that your choices, your options are very different from one another. They could be related, but you know there is a distinction among them so that your respondents will not have difficulties identifying their preferred answer or their preferred option. It is also best that when you are writing survey questions in the form of multiple choice, you avoid offering too many or too few options to them. So the by default, we, we have three to four options for our multiple choice questions. Survey questionnaires also always offer an out for questions that don't apply, meaning you need to make sure that there is an option for your respondents, for your study participants to not answer or maybe when the question does not apply to them, you provide them an option that it's not applicable. Here's a general structural content of a survey report. We have your title page or your cover page, a table of contents, executive summary or abstract, basically a general overview of your survey report. You also need to present a background. Why did you even conduct the survey? What is the survey all about and its objectives? Next is you need to present your methodology. How did you formulate your survey questionnaire? What made you decide to go into survey questionnaire or use a survey questionnaire? How did you give this out to your study participants? Who are your study participants? So you need to identify those things as well. Next is after implementing it, after giving it out and collecting them back, 
you need to make sure that you present your results and your findings. From that particular survey, from the results of the survey, what have you found out in relation to your research objectives or your research questions? Next is, of course, from that result or from those results or from those findings, what could be concluded from it in relation as well to your study objective or your study questions? And you can also give recommendations as researchers. And then the last part is attach a copy of your survey questionnaire. And maybe you can also attach a copy of some examples of their responses. Here's an example of how you could write your survey report. The first part is your presentation of collected data. So the way that you present your collected data could be in a form of a graphic organizer, like tables, um, graphs, or charts. So you do this because or you present the information like this in a visual manner because you want your readers to understand the results right away or the findings right away. Especially or particularly if it involves numbers such as this one. And then the next part, after you have presented your collected data, you need to find meaning or give meaning to this collected data and discuss what is it about. What is its relevance in relation to your study questions or your study objectives? The next kind of technical report is a scientific report. It is a type of an academic paper that is commonly used to report experimental research. Now, a scientific report will often include a thorough discussion of the materials used, your methods of experimentation, and of course, the discussion of the results of your experiment. Here are the different parts of a scientific report. The first one is your title. The next one is your abstract, your introduction, materials and methods, your results, your discussion, and of course, the literature cited in your scientific report. Last but not the least, we have a field report. Now, a field report is very different from the first two kinds of technical reports because it is a written document from data that is gathered outside the office or the laboratory because you are in the field. As a researcher, you go outside, you go to the field of study, and you describe what have you observed, okay? If it's a person you are describing or you are observing, is it a place that you are, or if it is a place that you are observing, or maybe an event, okay? So you are basically part, you put yourself in the context, you put yourself in the situation where the person, place, or event is. And try to write down, try to take note of those observations. More often than not, Field reports are taking the form of notes that are written or taken down during that observation. But it could also include any form of data gathering. Aside from note-taking, here are some other techniques in data gathering. You also could use video and audio recordings as well as illustrations. So aside from um, recording, via video or via audio, you can also draw or use graphic organizers to organize or present your observations. As someone who is in the field physically or someone who is assigned as a field reporter, there are certain things that you have to document to make your report as objective as much as possible. For example, you need to take note of the physical setting. So describe the physical setting depending on how you are perceiving it as someone who is in the field. What does it look like, okay? How does it feel like to be there? Next one, some objects and material culture. For example, how are they eating food? How are they, um, for example, you are looking into a group, group of people. How do they interact with one another using 
um, gestures or maybe how do they present themselves using their clothes and stuff like that. Those could be recorded as material culture as well. Next, you could also take note of the way that they use their language. How did they use their language? Are they using certain words that are very specific to their group or to that particular place? So you also need to take note of that. How is their language maybe different from the way that you understand it, the way that you interpret it, the way that you use it? Next, of course, is try to take down notes of certain events and how do these events unfold. How are these events happening? So you take note of your observations as these events are happening. And like what I have mentioned earlier, their body movements could also be representative of something. So these are some of the things that you could also um, try to look into, try to observe, try to notice, and try to take note of or document. Here are the parts of a field report. First, is, the second is your theoretical framework, and the third is your observation. Your introduction basically would provide a background, the rationale or the purpose behind your um, study or your research. And then your theoretical framework is similar to the framework provided or discussed in your um, research classes. Your theoretical framework is simply a framework that is derived from certain assumptions, certain theories, certain concepts that have already been used or have already been established in that particular field of study. So um, you are trying to ground your study, your observation on this particular um, framework. Last but not the least, of course, are your observations. Now, these are the ones that you have documented using note-taking, using video and audio visual recordings, as well as your illustrations. There are certain guidelines as well in writing reports. I know that these three are different, but I decided to just make one guideline for writing these kinds of reports because they are all technical in nature anyway. So the first one is deciding on the terms of reference and the purpose of your report. How are you going to refer to your report? Is it going to be a survey report? Is it going to be a field report? Or is it going to be an experimental or a scientific report? So try to identify what kind of report you are writing or what kind of report is necessary or needed okay, or, ex or is expected from you. And then, of course, what is the purpose of writing it in the first place? How is it related to the study that you are conducting? So you can ask your, yourself some questions such as, what is it about? What exactly is needed? Why is it needed? When do I need to do it? Who is it even for? Or who is it aimed at? Next is deciding on the procedure or the methodology. How are you going to conduct your collection of data? in order for you to be able to write that report, okay? So try to decide on the procedure. And here are some questions that you can try to answer. For example, what information do you need? Do you need to do any background reading? What articles or documents do you need? Do you need to contact the library for assistance or any other people? Do you need to conduct interviews or is it okay to be observing them? Do you need to record the data? How will you go about this? Okay, so that is how you will decide or go about your methodology. Next one is, of course, finding the information that you need. Remember that the information must always be relevant and appropriate, especially if you want it to support your document or you want it to support your own study. If you are unsure about it, it is always best to consult an expert or even a professional on your field of interest or your topic. Next, after you have collected the data, after you have collected the information, try to decide on the structure that you are going to use. What type of report is it? And try to go back to the different formats that are required for each kind of technical report. How formal should it be and how long should it be? Another thing that you have to consider or you have to do is you draft your first part of your 
report. Okay, so it's necessary that before you even submit it, try to draft what is to be included in your report. Write down the headings first, and you may fill these in with the information you have gathered so far. So maybe you can try to um, try to identify already what are the different parts or what should be the different parts of your report, what should be included in your report. And as you go along with your data gathering or data collection, you can just fill these out. After doing so, analyze the findings and draw conclusions from it. You can ask yourself questions such as, what have you found? What's significant or important about these findings? And what do these findings suggest? Maybe in order for you to do so, you can always relate it back to the field of study or topic. Next is making recommendations. After doing it, you have to make recommendations. So try to reread your findings and conclusions. Think about what you want the person who asked for the report should do or not do, and what action should be carried upon after reading this report. Okay, so take for example, in a school, a teacher made a survey report. Now, how is, it sur how is this survey report going to help her out as a teacher? How is it going to help out other teachers? How is it going to help out schools? Okay, are there certain changes that need to be done? So you need to make recommendations for that as well. Now, always make sure that your recommendations are practical. It's something that is feasible and something that is logical. Okay, something that other people can do. If you can do it, that doesn't necessarily mean that other people can do it. So you need to consider it when you are making your recommendations. Next is making sure that enough detail is provided for the readers in order for them to know what needs to be done and who should be doing it in the first place. So as a researcher, as a writer of a technical report, you also need to be very specific on who would be benefiting from your report. Next, you can now draft the executive summary and the table of contents. So basically, you are now trying to organize all the information that needs to be presented in your report. After which, compile a reference list and make sure that you include this reference list at the end of your report. Once done, you can always go back to it, double check, run a grammar check, run um, verifications, and revise your draft report as needed. Here are my sources and references. Thank you for joining me today.